So I'm just putting the finishing touches on a couple things, just trying to figure out what kind of gear I need and uh, get my setup together, get a little bit more organized, pack the bag and just get prepared for this sort of a impromptu day trip that I have planned tomorrow. Uh, the weather in North Carolina has just been awful the past couple weeks, just socked in with rain and clouds and we haven't seen the sun for what feels like over a week and a half, which for us is it's a lot. So um, I saw that the weather forecast for this particular location, I've been kind of eyeballing, is uh, favorable for tomorrow night around sunset. Partly cloudy conditions, um, an abundance of high clouds forecasted, really no medium to low clouds, which is perfect. So I'm thinking tomorrow, mid afternoon, drive up to this place called Hanging Rock. It's about three hours away, two and a half, three hours away and just see if uh, we can get lucky. Normally, when I plan these trips, I plan them out for, for multiple days, not just the day before. And I normally like to see a forecast that's fairly consistent with over, you know day after day after day, and it doesn't vary much, because that's usually a telltale sign that it's gonna be an accurate forecast. I just noticed this forecast um, earlier this morning, so it's kind of iffy if it'll actually hold up or not, we'll see, but even if we're not able to make anything, it'll still be good to, just get out of the house and just uh, shoot some photos. So, plus to give me a good opportunity to test this bad boy out. Uh, iFootage sent this to me maybe a month ago. I really haven't had an opportunity to test it out though. Looks pretty nice. I've used it indoors a lot just for uh, video work, but I really haven't done a whole lot with it outside. So I'm looking forward to uh, giving that a proper go tomorrow as well. So that's the plan. Kind of 50-50 if it's all gonna work out or not, but uh, either way, it's better than sitting in here, so. We will uh, plans to leave around mid-afternoon tomorrow and get up there to give us time to hike up there and get prepared to uh, shoot the sunset. So fingers crossed it'll work out. So something that I completely just didn't pay attention to was the amount of wind that could possibly be up here. I finally got to the top, it's pretty windy. I paid so much attention to the cloud cover and whether or not it was actually gonna rain that I just completely disregarded the wind. Check the wind, it's forecast to be like around 20 miles an hour for the next couple hours up until sunset. So it's gonna be pretty breezy up here. So I'll try to find some shelter so you could possibly hear me. But there's not a lot clouds in the sky right now which is pretty unfortunate it's um, I'm hoping it'll change I have about 90 minutes before sunset right now It'll give me plenty of time to find a composition but without clouds this this image is kind of hard to pull off this is one of those photos where you really need something to happen in the sky because no matter what your composition is you're gonna have a lot of sky in your photos so we really need something to happen here so fingers crossed uh, we have a little bit of time so hopefully some clouds will blow in Yeah, so I think I think this is the composition I'm going to go for. Let me let me pick you up here. So I like there's this kind of like these leading lines that come out to this point right down there where I was just standing on. And it kind of is pointing right there to hanging hanging rock. And I like that tree right there too. And I think I'm going to do a vertical orientation to try and get more of the foreground here leading out to that and try and eliminate how much of the boring sky I actually have in there. Assuming no clouds are gonna roll in, which it doesn't look like it's going to, we're about 45 minutes away from sunset and looking, the sky looks pretty bland right now. So I'm gonna have to focus on 
more foreground and less sky. But I really like that tree. I'm just trying to decide if I want to do a landscape or a portrait orientation with this. I think landscape is probably going to keep as much of the blue sky out of the photo as possible, at least more than a portrait orientation is, because there's just re there's really nothing, there's no clouds, there's nothing up there that's going to catch any of the setting sun over the mountains there. So uh, I'm going to really focus on the foreground and just try and eliminate as much of the sky as possible. But I'm fairly happy with this composition. I just wish there was something happening in the sky. It's going to be pretty hard to pull this off with uh, such a bland sky. Now, due to the dynamic range of this uh, scene, or the extreme dynamic range of the scene, I'm going to have to bracket this to even have a chance of properly exposing it. So here's the scene I have right now, or here's the composition, how I have it set up and the settings that I have, although the light's fading fast, so these settings are changing almost instantly. Since there's no clouds in the sky at all, the, uh, the light fades super fast. There's nothing to really hold any light back or catch any light, so as the sun drops, I mean, it gets dark super fast. So I lifted the center column of this tripod up because there's a lot of uh, kind of residual light right down there which is kind of cool you can see a little bit of it. i'm not sure if you can see that but i wanted to try and capture that it adds a little bit of additional interest into the photograph so i wanted to see if i could possibly capitalize on that i'll tell you what trying to film shoot these photos in this wind on this cliff side is proven to be extremely difficult i don't even know if you guys can even hear me i really hope you can This is most definitely not an easy photo. It's so windy up here, and I'm trying to keep my shutter speed as fast as possible to try and keep that, the branches on that tree from blurring, and at the same time properly exposing the scene without having to crank up the ISO so much. So on top of everything else, this has proven to be an extremely challenging shoot. Well, I think that's it. I think the peak color's gone, the light's fading pretty quickly, and I want to try and get out of here before it gets too dark and find my way back down. So, uh, it wasn't the most incredible sunset, but uh, it was better than nothing. It actually did turn out a little bit better than having uh, no sky or no clouds in the sky whatsoever. So, uh, it could have definitely been worse. So, I'm looking forward to getting home and uh, seeing exactly what we came up with. So, we'll find out here shortly. Well, that went about as well as planned, which wasn't very planned in the first place. And I almost turned around, actually. I got about 45 minutes from my house. I'm looking at the Clear Outside app, and I'm noticing that the amount of high clouds that are predicted is going down almost every single time I check the app. So I almost turned around just to do it another day. I'm thinking to myself, Mark, if you, if you wait for the perfect weather conditions all the time to go out and shoot, you're just not going to do a lot of shooting. You're going to do more weather predicting than anything. So I figured go on with it. Hopefully we'll get lucky. And I'm glad I did. But if I would have paid attention to the wind, I would not have gone. I knew I wanted to, to film a video on this trip. And balancing my video tripod with my stills tripod with that wind on that cliff was, uh, was super challenging to do. It wasn't easy at all. It was actually fairly nerve wracking. I almost lost this one over the edge of the cliff. It took a tumble, but it didn't break or anything like that. And uh, still good to get out. It was good to, to test this out as well, which I like this. This is the, the iFootage Gazelle TC6 Uprise, it's called. It's got some of the coolest feet I've ever seen on a tripod. Check this out. Rubber foot, and you spin it, and a little spike comes out the bottom. So it's kind of two for one. I think that's pretty cool. My really right stuff tripod has spikes, but you got to unscrew one set of feet and then put on the spikes. So it's one extra step. So it's kind of cool that these are uh, kind of all in one feet. That's pretty neat. And then this little swivel head is pretty cool because you don't have to worry about balancing the actual tripod. You can just balance the head that your ball head mounts to. This is my really right stuff BH40 ball head. And I just mount it to this little swivel head and it's got a little bubble level right here. And then you can just balance, balance this. So it worked out good on this trip because it was, it was almost impossible to actually balance the tripod. So it worked out good. It was a good way to test this out. So um, that was good. But 
yeah, if you're in, in, interested or in the market for a new tripod, I'll put the link in the description below. This is, um, I don't know if this is available for sale just yet, but um, I know it's going to retail for $299. And for a carbon fiber tripod of this quality, that's a pretty good deal. So uh, I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to uh, using it more. But um, as far as the photos go of this trip, I did get one that I'm, I'm pretty happy with. It's uh, right here. And what's interesting is my favorite photo happened to be the one with the guy playing the guitar, which was so wild because as I'm taking the photos, the light's getting good. I'm kind of frantic because I'm trying to balance, you know, my video camera while it's filming me taking the photos. And I have to take my eyes off the video camera while I take the photos. So that was kind of nerve wracking. And then I hear this music playing in my ears. And I'm thinking I hit a button on my phone and it's just playing music. And then I look closer and I see a guy had wandered out there and he's playing the guitar. So that was pretty cool. It's never actually happened to me before. But the ironic part of it all is, is this is my favorite photo from the shoot is that one of him playing. So, and I actually cropped this a lot. You can see this is the original photo and I cropped in because I really didn't want to lose him in the photo because I like not only the scale that it provides, but I like the story it tells too. And I love the fact that he happens to be sitting right next to this smaller tree and the tree just almost kind of is, it's like hugging him a little bit. So I love that. I think it's a great uh, contrast next to this tree as well. But some of the things I did with the photo, you can see some of the basic adjustments I did right here. I did use a graduated filter on the sky and I had to use a luminosity mask because I didn't want to affect the trees right here or this cliff side. And I'll show you what I did actually. If I hold on the option key, you can, you'll be able to see the mask. So you can see how the tree is completely blacked out and the edit's only going to be on the white area because uh, white reveals, black conceals. So only the area in white will receive the edit. And I ultimately just wanted to bring down the exposure of the sky just a little bit because the sky was really bright, no clouds. So it was, it was pretty harsh sky. So as you can see, I brought down the exposure just a touch. I um, also added some contrast in the tone curve and lifted the shadows. And I did a decent amount in the HSL panel here. I'll open this up so you can take a look and I'll toggle this off and on. So this right here, as soon as my computer catches up, is uh, the way it looks straight out of camera. And then this is the way it looked after I adjusted the colors. Just added a little bit more punch. There it is right there. And I like that because that's really the only color in the sky. So I was really trying to make sure we didn't lose that. And then I did a little bit of dodging and burning along the cliff side right here, just to try and bring out what little light was shining up on the, uh, the cliff side here. Let me just uh, toggle this on and off so you can take a look because the whenever there's no clouds in the sky and the you know you get that nice side light that we all want but it becomes really harsh sometimes so i almost had to let the sun go down so low to where it wasn't so so harsh against the rocks and then that ultimately just came back it, it resulted in just very very subtle light so i was really trying to exaggerate that and kind of bring it back so this is the way it looked uh, before i put the dodging and burning or applied the dodging and burning and this is the way it looked after uh let's see Mm, it's still loading. There we go. Now you can see the difference. So really all through here and all along here and up through here and down through here. So just kind of added a little bit more texture and structure and kind of three dimension to the overall photograph. And then the last major thing I did to it is I put a pretty large uh, radial filter all across this area here and just kind of brighten this area up because that's the main focus. And I also use that in conjunction with a vignette on the outside around the corners, just to really draw the viewer's eye into this area of the photo, because ultimately that's uh, that's where we want the viewer to look. So I ended up, um, I do like the photo. I just really wish that we would have had a nice, explosive, colorful sunset all through here. I think that would have been just absolutely fantastic. But can't always get those conditions. It was, uh, it was still better than sitting at home. Still happy I was able to, to get here and create this photo. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results. So that's it for this week's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. I put a lot of work into trying to, to orchestrate that with the, the wind and balancing everything. And I'm super happy that nothing uh, took the, the long tumble off the side of uh, the cliff there. So I'm glad all that worked out. But um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching uh, this week's video. And if you have any questions, as always, just leave them in the comment section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you and I will see you all next week.
Bye.